So cool, we have our backups and our saves. Okay, so let's open it up. It should look something like this. Hello guys, Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Idle Game tutorial video. This is episode 35, and today we're gonna be improving our current save system. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, leave your suggestions and your advice and all that good stuff in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications for all my future videos and to check out my other videos in this top corner right there. You'll find a lot of helpful stuff. Also, just a heads up, I have like 70 more videos planned out, like not recorded, but like I have a list of videos to do. So I got lots of stuff I need to do. So if you think I'm running out of content, you're completely mistaken. I got lots of stuff to teach, lots of stuff to show. And it, some of that stuff in the 70s includes like special videos, like 1,000 subscribers or 2,000 subscriber special, 3,000 subscriber specials. Like here, I'll show you my list. So you see, I have like a huge list. Huge list. So I got like a gameplay series, I got extra coding tutorials, extra Unity tutorials. So here I have, I'm going to continue the Adventure Capitalist series. I'm going to do 2,000 subscribers, it's going to be Adventure Communist. 3,000 is going to be turn based games, so just like an R basic RPG game. 4K Tap Titans, 5K Idle Miner Tycoon, 6K Idle Merge games, so such as like Scrap Clicker 2. 7K, make a game based on like a comment section so this be kind of like a special one so maybe i'll do like a six or 7.5k where i get to choose like everyone gets to choose what i get to do with the game next for like 10 episodes and see how it turns out uh 8k farming games 9k crafting game 10k crypto clickers and five patreons anti-matter dimensions i will be any at any moment when i hit five patreons i will do an anti-matter dimension series and I'm currently on two Patreon, so if you want to help me out, links in the links in the description. I have my idle uh, idle game series, and yes, so far I have planned up to episode 50. Crash Course I have planned up to like episode 42, and Clicker Heroes I'm going to continue that as well. So improving our save system, what is that going to look like? Well, in our previous save system, there was kind of a bit of issue I guess we could have we couldn't properly save lists and we yeah we couldn't save lists arrays were kind of hard to manage like to create new arrays to adjust them it was kind of it was kind of a hassle so this should fix all of it and we aren't going to be saving in JSON anymore we're just going to be we're using um binary formatter so basically we're converting it to a binary like format or like where it's like a bunch of um if you've seen those weird window sim or those weird symbols in like a .exe, it kind of looks something like that, but it's not completely encrypted. And the thing is that it won't work with the export system, so we got to convert that with Base64 and simple AES, which is what we've been doing in this uh, previous system, just not in JSON anymore. All right, so let's hop into our save system script. Okay, so we still have our player data um, class, right? So we're going to keep this, of course. Now, the cool thing with the save system is that we can create multiple classes. So you can have some dedicated to, like, for example, Earth, Mars. You can have some different classes dedicated to that specifically, which is going to be really cool. And I'll show you how we manage that, okay? And in this full reset system, this can also all move to the player data. Um, constructor because what we can do is if we want a full reset let's here let's do this real quick so let's grab our full reset um, full reset where is it right here so instead of doing data dot full reset we can just do data equals data or or data equals new player data okay now this basically just creates a whole brand new player data project or object with these parameters right here our defaults right so instead of doing that full reset method we can just do it in the constructor itself okay so there's a lot of blue lines going here so i'm going to kind of just like uh enhance things by replacing the with stuff uh replacing all this replacing all these sorry i cannot speak i'm more of a retainer again but replacing all these blue line stuff with var because these are already kind of predefined objects right or the code already knows what type it is, so we can just replace it with var. 
which is what I'm doing right now. Fundamentally, nothing really is changing in our save system. However, the issue with upgrading this is that P if you've already released your game for some reason, or for whatever reason, um, the saves are going to be different, okay? So everyone's going to lose their data because we aren't using JSON anymore. JSON, I feel like it, it's um, it will take too much data, I guess, so, and there's some benefits to not saving to um, JSON. Basically, here, I'll explain how things work after I start writing things out. Okay, so let's see. What do we have here? We have our create file, load player, convert, import. Okay, let's just ignore these for now. Clear fields, ignore that for now. We really need to focus on, we can get rid of uh, create file, Cre get rid of that. And honestly, let's just restart from scratch. I feel like that's the most appropriate thing to do. Okay. So in our save path, we're gonna create a different, like, um, we're gonna do something different, okay? So I can't exactly like always remember at the top what I need to do because it's kind of hard to memorize everything. But I'm looking at my other save system here that I created. It took me quite a bit to do. So I'm trying to find it. Okay. So what we're going to do is our save path is going to be application dot. Uh, what is it? persistent data path and we're going to add a plus saves okay so we're going to save all of our normal saves in this folder right so now this is where having numerous saves comes to play we can have different save files in here instead of having numerous ones we can just have one and also this will make it easier to export some code or like our data is that we can export a certain like like for example our earth like let's say there's something wrong with earth and i only need the earth you can just send or the, the person or you only needs to know what's wrong with the earth you can just export this earth you can debug it and so just like that okay um so this is our save path our save path backup is going to be the same thing but it's going to be backups okay so we're going to be saving to both saves and backups, okay? Also another thing, I I believe this is much safer than to do what we've been previously doing and we shouldn't get any more of those sharing violation errors anymore because uh, this is much more properly done. All right, so let's start with our public static void save or save player, okay? So a few things we're going to do differently is we need to add a type, okay, t, t, uh, data, we're just going to call this data, and we need to add a key. Now this key is the file name, so we can actually just call this file name, or no, not, not file name, it's just going to be key or name, name, that's fine, okay. Now, so why do we have this here? It's for when we call it, when we in our script we do this save system dot save player. See it asks for a type now. We can just put player data, and then do uh, player data as the type, and then or this would be. Let's see. Now again, we're not in our main script, so let's actually move this to our main script here. For example, where is our save save? So it would be player data and then data and then our file, like what the data we want to do or the name of it is going to be called, I don't know, player data. Now you, you can call this like if you do different planets like Earth, Mars, you can call this Earth and then you can have like a an Earth class, okay, to organize some things. And now you see this is grayed out. This is redundant. So you can just get rid of that. But this also kind of helps ex like show you what kind of object this is, or what the type is. But this will do, okay? And what happens if we get rid of this? Then we can't use the generic type, which is what T is, okay? So we have to have this in here. 
Okay, so we can we can keep this in here honestly and get rid of this because we're gonna use it in anyways. So save system dot save player data colon comma. Why did I say colon? <laughs> I was like, wait, did I say colon or comma? Okay, comma player data. <laughs> um, yeah, that should be good. Oh, we also have another. Wait, is this load? Oh, this is load player. Okay, yeah. So this will be our load player. Uh, we will get to that. But our save player right here will be this. Okay. Okay, so what we need to do now is create a folder or a directory. And we do directory.create directory. And we have our save path. Okay. So now we're just creating a new folder if it doesn't exist already. Okay. And now we're going to start um, writing stuff to the file. So we're going to do using stream stream writer writer is equal to and also this can be var but we're just going to create it first new stream writer and this is just our um our path right here our stream where is this going to and that will be save path plus name plus dot text okay so remember this player data now it will be called player data dot text okay dot txt <clears throat> okay and we can make this a var all right so now we need to create a a binary formatter equals new binary formatter and again this can be var we need to create uh, a memory stream. So we're just going to call this uh, MS or memory stream. It's going to be equal to new memory stream. OK. And now we need to serialize our data, our data right here. So we do formatter. No, formatter dot deserialize. No serialize memory stream and our data okay so now we have serialized our uh, data into memory stream we can now uh, convert it to simple AES or encrypt it well we want to do um, base 64 first or however you want to encrypt it you can include that if you want to or not but we're going to include it anyways okay So we're going to do var data to write, and this is going to be a string. This is going to be equal to simple AES dot encrypt. Encrypt string. Is it encrypt string? Why is it not showing up? Oh, yeah. Okay, that was weird. It wasn't showing up. So encrypt string uh, convert dot to base 64 to um, two base 64 string. Uh, ms or memory stream to array and we're going to encrypt this key just like that we are missing something what's wrong okay I guess I had to make encrypt string static okay so I might as well make decrypt string static as well okay so I guess that's what I was suggesting me earlier so make sure your encrypt string and your decrypt string I need to take off these uh I need to take these out for tutorials because it's, it's kind of difficult to talk because there's something in my mouth all the time um but yeah so we need to make both of these static in order to use it um wherever uh okay so we're done oh wait no we're not we gotta do writer dot right line data to right now we have successfully converted everything to base 64 and that's a well a, a base 64 string and then we encrypted it with simple aes with our encrypt key which we've created in the past this can be marked as private we don't even i don't even think we need this json anymore i don't know we'll see so we have our save player, but we haven't done our save backup yet, okay? So let's see, we have our backup count here. 
let's add it. Add one every time. Okay, so now let's just have an if statement. If backup count uh, mod four equals zero. So every five times, we're going to save it to both the backup and saves, okay? Or no, we can just do backups only just in case the backup save corrupts, but the save one doesn't. So, um, yeah, we're going to have this if or this else statement here. Okay, and basically it's the same thing as here, except we are replacing the save path with their save back path backup. Okay, so now we can simplify this. Okay, so let's just create a method here called void save. Okay, now we need our string path. What else do we need? We need our, no, we don't need data. We just need the path, all right? Yep, that looks correct to me. So now we have our void save um, string path right here. All we need to do here is this, in this if else statement, we can just do save. Uh, so normally it would go to save path. Okay. Otherwise, if it's we're doing on a backup save, it'll just save to our backup. Okay, and we can simplify this to a question mark operator. So save backup uh, backup mod four equals zero question mark. If it's true, if it's every five times, if it's true, then we're gonna do our backup. Otherwise, we're gonna do the regular save. And there we go. That's our save player. Now we need to do the void. Or we need to do load player. Okay, so before we continue, this is not void. We are loading a data type. Okay, so we're going to replace this with T. We're going to add a generic type T here. And our key will be the path or the file name. Okay. And this will be name. Okay, so this is very similar to um, kind of what we've done here with the using, except we're using stream writer instead. Okay, so we're going to create a directory as well, just in case it doesn't exist. Uh, also, we should create a, we need to create our backup directory too. I forgot about that. So make sure you create a backup directory. Okay. Um, all right, so now we need to create a generic type real quick. We're just going to call this uh, return value. Okay, now we're going to be uh, setting, okay, we're going to be returning t type T. Again, this is the generic type. Okay, so in here, we're going to be using uh, var reader equals new stream reader. And it's the same path here. Okay, so we will have the same backup. Okay, but for now, we're just going to copy and paste this and use the regular save path, and then we'll develop into our safety thing. And basically, we're only going to load the backup if the save, if the normal one doesn't exist or if it's corrupted or if something's wrong with it, okay? And we can do this by doing try catch, okay? And I'll do that additionally. We're going to create a formatter. Okay, and we need to do, uh, we're going to create another string variable called data to read, and we're going to do reader dot read to end. So basically, it's going to read the entire file and set it to the string. And we need to create a memory stream. Var memory stream is equal to a new memory stream. Okay, now we're going to convert our string from we're going to decrypt it we're going to decrypt the AES because that's like the final layer and then we're going to convert it from base 64 back to stream and then we're going to uh, decrypt that okay we're going to deserialize that okay so we're going to do convert dot from base string okay so what we're going to do First of all, let's just start with the simple AES, okay? So we're going to do simple AES dot decrypt string, and this will be our uh, data to read. 
and our encrypt key. Okay, so we have our simple AES. Now we need to convert this base64 string into a normal string, a deserializable string. Um, okay, so we do convert dot from base64 string, and then we have that go around the simple AES de uh, dot decrypt string, and there we go. We should be good. <coughs> Okay, so now we're gonna do a try catch here. Now uh, we can get rid of this exception because we don't really need to throw these errors. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set return value equal to um, formatter dot deserialize memory stream. <coughs> okay, so now the issue here is that it doesn't know what type it is, right? So we need to cast this as type T or generic, okay? So now what if this doesn't work, okay? We're gonna set return value equal to default. So basically this, what it does is that it takes whatever class it is and it sets it equal to the default, which is for player data, this is our default right here, okay? And now at the end, we need to return, uh, return value. And there we go. So now we need to get our backup save or our backup system to work. So what we can do here is now, I think I might as well just call a different method. I think I have an idea. Because I don't want to call this inside reader because readers open and that will, call, that will cause a sharing violation. So we need to have it do it afterwards. Okay, so let's have a bool. Uh, let's just do backup needed. We're gonna set it equal to false. Okay, and we're gonna set backup needed equal to true. Okay, so if backup needed is true, then we're gonna do this all over again, except with the backup path the save backup okay and now we're gonna do we're gonna get rid of that and we're just gonna return this as a default again remember if okay so basically if this backup is needed then we're gonna do this again but with the save backup the save path backup and um, we can honestly get rid of this return value right here. Oh, we might actually need it. Shoot, okay. <laughs> I thought this would solve it. Or maybe this will. And then we can get rid of this. No? Okay. Okay, well, this is pretty lengthy. I'm sure we can shorten this. If we create this into a method, this will kind of cause an issue. Um. Okay, let's do this. Let's convert this into void load. And again, we only need our path, our string path. Okay, and now in here, we're gonna do backup needed again for both, because uh, honestly, I'd rather have shorter code. So if the backup's needed, then we're gonna do load backup needed. No, 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 it's backup path. Okay. And then otherwise, originally, we're just going to do save path. Okay. Okay. This should be good. So first, it'll try the regular save path, and then we'll do our backup path. Yeah, that's much shorter. And then we'll return that. Okay. So we have our save and load player. So let's uh, get this load player into the actual script. So again, we in here we need our uh, player data, and in here we just need the key, so which is player data. Cool. Now you see we do need this because we don't specify a type in like as a parameter, unlike we do for save right here. So yeah, this is needed, and it's not needed for our save, but. If you want to see what type this is, then you can just add it for 
quality of life, but I prefer not to see grays, so I just get rid of it. And I know data is player is type player data, so okay. Now we need to do our our devil. Well, uh, let's okay. So it doesn't look like we need this. We need to do export and import. Okay, so this shouldn't be too bad. We're just going to be um basically just calling this load player from import player with the string okay so i i haven't done this in this script yet so i'm gonna give it a shot but i i believe we're gonna use uh var reader equals new stream reader the thing is that is is this a stream reader in here yeah so we're using a stream reader inside of a stream reader okay well that's an issue uh, uh i hate doing this okay And I guess, um, well, we're actually, well, we're not reading from a path. Okay. I think I have an idea. I think we should just copy this right here. And do this. Okay. So import, we don't need this. We need a string path. No, not path. Well, you see here, it seems here we're going to be having multiple say, uh, import buttons. So we can have a string path here. Or actually, you know what? Let's do int ID. And what we can do is have uh, a switch ID. I mean, we only have two. So let's just create this and then I can shorten it. So if it's zero, then we're going to be using... Uh, var save uh var path equals empty string and we'll set path equal to save path break case one path is equal to backup and break and then again it's probably gonna ask us the shortness no okay well i i guess that's fine because we can expand this if you have more save paths. Actually, no, we don't need this backup path. Okay. So this is really used if you have more than one save path. Like if you have one for Earth, if you have one for Mars, something like that. So we only have one. So let's just keep it to simple. Even though we can simplify this with just an if with an if else statement. But this can be easily expanded. So just know. I'm going to keep it here for you to expand on it. If if you don't need it, convert it to an if statement. It's just as simple as that. Like that. Okay. So now we need to use our path here. Yeah. So we have path. Okay. Yeah. We create a formatter. Data to read. No. But we're doing... Okay, we're doing this. We're... No. <laughs> uh... This is like, I think this is more like a save player rather than a, a load player. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so we have our path. We write our, okay, so we need our data. Our data. Okay, I think this is what I was like kind of wanting to figure out instead. Instead of saving, so we have our... We have our string here, right? So, yeah, all we need to do is import the string. So, let's see, where is this import value.txt? I think that's it, right here. We just need to do, we don't even need to serialize this. We just need to do, yeah, because we already do this data to write. Because it's already encrypted. I think this is all we need to do in our in our stream writer. I'm, I'm guessing. So I'm guessing this is all we need to do for import player. Export, that's just that's just the the load. That's the load player. Alright, except we're exporting it. So actually we can do Okay, yeah, we still need to do this type thing here. So here, let's just copy and paste this. Um 
We're going to have this bull back up needed again. We're not going to return anything. We don't need to deserialize anything. We just need to read this. Yeah, we just need this right here. Var data to read. Okay, so what we can do is try catch this here. And if it doesn't exist, and then we are just going to um, set this to true. Okay. And our data to read, where is this? Oh, it's a variable. Oh, I see. Well, we can just create a string right here. Okay. And at the end of this, we can return. And this is, oh, no, no, no. We don't, we don't want to do that. We want to do export value dot text is equal to data dot read or data to read. Oh my gosh. This is, this is, <laughs> this is a crap load of stuff to do. We can get rid of this exception too. Okay. I think we're done. I hope. <laughs> So again, all of our data should be cleared, wiped, and this should be brand new. Better than ever. This was a lot, I mean, I should have done this beforehand, so I know what I was doing. But, hey, we all learn something new every day. So, let's see how this works. Offline manager. I don't even use offline manager. Yeah, what did I do with offline manager? Uh, shoot. Okay, well, hold on. Let me pull up GitHub. Okay, I see what I did. In our save, we need to add... Oh, okay. Well, this is kind of an issue here because... Offline progress check is not in every single type, right? Hmm. Okay. I feel like if data is player data, then... <laughs> uh, okay. Well, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do this inside... Uh, I'm going to do this out here. So when we save, I'm going to do data dot offline progress check equals true. Okay. That's just the same thing. And this can honestly be done. Uh, where are we? Where is our save system? I like lost it. What, what happened? Okay. Uh, right here. We can honestly do this offline time somewhere else but it's not gonna matter it because it's not like we're doing it in a class or we're not changing a variable in an object so i guess that doesn't really matter okay so one more thing we need to do we need to check if this file actually exists okay so this is a simple bool so we're just going to create a public static bool save exists and this is going to be a string key and basically our var path is going to be equal to um, our save path. Oh, yeah. We're just going to do... We're going to try catch this. So we're going to try... So basically we're going to set path equal to... Uh save path plus key like this right here okay and then we're gonna check to see um, here let's create a bool or var exists equals false okay now we're gonna do here is we're gonna set it to equals file dot exists or file exists File dot exists path. We can honestly just not do this in a try catch, but would might as well. Uh, let's not do this in a try catch. This is unnecessary. 
so we're basically in here we're gonna do if exists is false then we're gonna check We're going to do the backup one now. And then we're going to return the actual result if a save exists. Actually, you know what? I think we're checking for the actual save. So we're just not going to do this right here. Okay. This can be done here. You can get rid of that. Okay. Um, all right, so if save exists, we're doing that. Okay, so now this is where we use save system. So we're going to go back to where we load our data. Let's see, where is that? Load. Okay, so now what we're going to do is save system dot save exists, question mark. If it does exist, player data. It's our key. It's our file name. If it's true, then we're going to load our player. Otherwise, we're just going to do uh, new player data. And let's just do data equals. Okay. Now, the reason why the data equals, first of all, because save system .load player is returning T, the generic type, which is whatever we put in, player data, for example. And if we just do this right here, it's like that, it's not gonna do it. It won't give you an error, but it's not gonna do anything. It's not setting anything equal to, you know, if we do data dot, if we do data equals save system dot load player, player data, player data, then it will work, okay? So otherwise, if it doesn't exist, then we're just gonna create a new player data object. Got it? That's all we need to do there. And I think we're good to go. So let's check this out. We need to kind of mm, adjust our, um, let's see, we need to go to settings, our import, let's see, import right here, missing save system, this is save system, import player, int, this is zero, export player, yep, we're good. Okay, so let's just try this out, see if it works. Okay, we should be error free. No, we got some errors. Okay, well that's not good. Uh, what? Oh, I see what we did wrong. Save system. I think this is because it's mono behavior. Is that really why? Since when was application dot persistent date data path? What? Since when was this not allowed in mono behavior? Call it in awake or start instead. What? I have never. Oh, I think I see why. Is it this? I think it's whenever we access it. I see. I think that makes sense. Okay. So we gotta make we gotta make this a property by adding the arrow. See if you hover over this, it's a property and this is a field. Okay. So the difference between a field is we're setting something initially. While a property is something that is already defined, like this. So this is a property, this is a field, okay? So, let, okay, this should work now, error-free, hopefully, cross our fingers. Oh, we're error-free? Okay, so now let's go find our, let's go find it. Okay, so we're here. It's in uh, local disk, users, username, eight, uh, app data local low default company or whatever your company name is which you should have done in like your player settings and your project name so cool we have our backups and our saves okay so let's open it up it should look something like this see this is much smaller than what it used to be this is actually pretty small now i let's see can i grab okay so here let's compare so it looks like it's a kilobyte bigger let's open this uh oh it is a bit bigger but that's okay. It's okay if it's a bit bigger. Now, again, this is more efficient. You can do much more with it. So I guess it's an upgrade in a way. But this is bigger, sadly. But it's okay. So we have our saves and we have our backups. Very cool. And our back or our saves and backups should be the same. Cool. So now let's start playing. Uh, 
Uh, let's buy some upgrades. Let's get some achievements in. Okay. Now we got some stuff. Let it save. So let's see. Let's, where's our main game right here? When is it saving? Okay, so it just saved. Now we should load in correctly. Cool. We did it. So let's see. Did our upgrade save? Yep. Cool. So now we know that the system can definitely works. I want to kind of sort. I'm gonna try to shorten this real quick. If it if I don't, then I'm just gonna skip this. Okay. So yeah, I looked. I don't see a really a like an easy way around this. So let's see. We can delete some of this stuff. We can delete offline. We can make this private, private, cool. And yeah, this is, we don't, we don't use this. So in summary, I will show you what I have so far. If you're in a rush, what's this? Okay. So, oh my gosh, we have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we can ignore this. Okay. So we have our simple AES class right here. This is what it looks like. I will be sure to provide this in the comments below. So just make sure all you gotta do is change the encrypt key, um, change the init vector, change the, customize your, uh, your path names. Make sure you replace the save systems here. Okay, so I highly suggest you to watch this entire video just so you understand how this works. Okay, here we go. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on those notifications so you get notified for every single video. It helps me, and liking the video and subscribing and all that good stuff helps me a lot as well, and I very appreciate it. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a good day or night. Peace.